Hi, Francis Potter, Senior Professional Services Engineer for GitLab here. And um, I wanted to talk about semantic versioning in the context of GitLab CI CD and an approach that I kind of threw together over the years that might be helpful to some people and it might be a little bit different from what you're currently doing. So here's the challenge. The challenge is you've got a project. In my case, I've got this project here called MyPyRef. Don't worry about what it is. In this case, it's actually a PIP project. So I'm building a PIP package, but it could also be a web project either way. And here's what I want to do. I want to semantically version this thing. So I want to use Git tags for that. I also want to use GitLab releases for that, although that's kind of optional. And um, I, want an, I want the application itself to know what its version is. So for two reasons. One is I want when I build it, I want the PIP package to have the correct version number according to my semantic versioning process. And secondly, if it's a web project, I might want to drop the version number in the footer so I always know which version I'm looking at. So those are two cases where I want the project code to know its version. But I don't really want to have to commit back to the Git repo just to increment the version because that kind of taints your Git history. It sort of smells bad when you've already run things like automated testing on your repo and now you're making a new commit just to tag a release and it's like, um, but you kind of have to do that in order to get that information back into the repo so that the project knows about it. So there's a workaround. It uses GitLab CI artifacts and Git tags so that you can increment your version number, have your code know about it, and not actually have to commit it back to the repo in a Git commit, and certainly not have to do a Git commit in CI, but you can do all this version work within CI if you want to. So let me show you how it works. This is my PyRef, it's a little project. And I created another little project, it's, it's MIT licensed called Vernum, which is, I mean, oh, there's a hundred of these, this is your semantic version. Now what Vernum does is very specific though. It looks at the Git tag history on the current ref and increments semantic version based on the Git tag history. So it assumes that your Git tags hold your semantic version history. Then it doesn't write the tag it writes that to a file called dot version, okay? But we're not gonna commit that file back to the repo. Let me show you how it works. Uh, I'm gonna go to my terminal here. I'm in the MyPyRef project here locally. I'm just gonna install Vernum, uh, pipx install Vernum. Uh, really like pipx because it keeps everything nicely isolated for system level stuff. Uh, so there's Vernum. So I'm in MyPyRef, I can look at my Git tags and I can see that I made it up to version 1.0.1 so far. Okay, so let's say I want to increment minor, right? I can say vernum minor. And what's happened here is it says version updated to 1.1.0. But if I do a git log, it hasn't done the tagging yet. I can see my 101 tag down there, but I had, it hasn't done the tagging for 1.1.0. What it has done is it's put in a file called dot .version with just the version number in it. Okay, now I'm not going to commit that back to the repo. That's key. In fact, if you think you might be tempted to do that, then put dot .version in your .git ignore and you're good because you don't want to taint your Git history with all these little commits that are just to update a version number um, because you want, to, you want the sanctity of this commit has passed unit tests to be real without having to run all your unit tests again on a commit that's basically identical, right? So what I'm going to do now, now though is I want to do the pip build, but wait, that version number is not in my pyproject.toml, but is it? Because now I admit I'm using the old setup tools, not poetry, just because I haven't gotten around to figuring out poetry yet. But um, what I'm doing here is I'm making version a dynamic property and I'm referencing it from that dot version file. So now when I do my build, my build, my pyproject.toml knows about my version number without me having to commit it back in. Likewise, if I was deploying this and it was a web app, I could just deploy that dot .version file alongside everything and the project would know, the, 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 the web app would know what version it is. Now, this is all kind of cool, but how can you actually use that in the context of CI? And that's where it gets even better. So. Uh, go back to my project here, my MyPyRef project. If I look at my GitLab CI YAML, I'm actually including a template here um, called Python package release.gitlabci.yaml. This is just something else I threw together. Also MIT license, feel free to use. I'm doing some tests. Well, not really, but I'm pretending. 
And what that does is it does all of this in the pipeline. So um, I'm going to go down to the last time I did a release, which is here. And what I've got, I got my test job here. And then I've got these four jobs in sequence. I put them all in one stage with dependencies just to make it nicely packaged in the CI YAML, but you could make them separate stages if you wanted. Um, first stage runs Vernum. That increments the version number in that dot .version file based on the history of Git tags, okay? Uh, the second stage is, or the second job rather, is tag, which is actually creating the Git tag, but it's using the release CLI, the GitLab release CLI that um, does the Git tag and creates the release object in GitLab. So we got everything recorded really nicely and that tag has been put back. Now I haven't created a new commit. I just tagged the existing commit and I'm using artifacts to pass that dot .version file from one job to the next, right? My next job is my pip build um, using, I'm currently using setup tools, but whatever. Uh, and that's doing that include that I just showed you or including it in the pyproject.toml. And the fourth one is publishing it up to PyPy. So this is how I do all my projects. This could be, a, obviously could be a deploy stage at that point. Um, and so what that Python package release, um, I just put this somewhere where you can get at it on gitlab.com. Uh, this is doing the release here, Vernum, tag, build, and publish. And what I've done is I've made these manual jobs and um, and I'm requiring the user to enter a version, uh, uh, whether they're doing patch minor or major or none in the increment. So what this means is that not every push to the main branch or the default branch is going to increment the version number. You have to explicitly do it, but you can explicitly do it entirely within CI. So what I could do is I could go here and, uh, oh goodness. Oh, whoops, wrong project. Sorry about that. Um, I could go back to pipelines. I could say run pipeline and I could say main branch is my ref. And then I can say, Vernum is none. That's just a manual run with no Vernum. And that'll also be the default if you're when you're just doing a push, right? Or I can say, hey, I'm ready. This commit, this commit is now the current commit on the main branch is now ready for minor release, major release patch, and that'll kick off that pipeline. And you can also do that from the command line using um glab ci run hyphen hyphen variables. I forget the exact syntax, but uh, vernum equals patch or whatever. And assuming that your glab is all configured correctly, you could kick off that pipeline from the command line. So what you've got now is semantic versioning. You can control whether you're incrementing major, minor, or patch. You can do it all in CI. You're not making a new git commit. So your CI doesn't have to do git commit. You don't have to rerun any tests or anything like that. You're not changing your git history, but you can still access the new version number both from the release object in GitLab, from the Git tag history, and within the built product, because you're using artifacts to pass that dot .version file along to any successive stages in the pipeline that might need it. So anyway, just a cool little thing that I built, and uh, I hope that's useful, and have a great day.